Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night live. We're going to give everybody a couple minutes to get into the room here. I'm going to comment in here with the uh, a link of where you'll be ordering tonight. And I'm going to share this with some other groups quick. If it will let me. Hmm. Yep, it's not giving me the other groups. Okay, well, we're not going to share with them then. Try this one more time. We're going to be doing stamping tonight. I see some people are coming into the room. I see Vicky's already saying mystery box. Janine will be watching for that. All right, we're going to turn off the share here. All right, we already got 25 people in the room. So tonight we're going to be <clears throat> doing stamping, and I'm going to show you several different methods. I'm going to show you some of the samples while people come into the room. This is doing stamping and then adding colors. I'm going to show you how to do the banding on a banding wheel. Um, we did that in another um, live a while back. I'm going to show you just doing real simple designs with just one color on a stamp. And this is another sample um, done with, with colors in the stamps. I'm going to show you how that's done. And we're going to do just, I'll talk about the little mini stamps. We've got some brand new mini stamps tonight. Um, some of them just came in literally today. We'll show you that. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the leaf stamps and how to add colors and washes like watercolor like we did on this box. And then um, for those of you who have the Azure markers, um, you can also do the stamping and then use the Azure on top of the stamping. Because the markers are translucent, um, you'll be able to see the stamping through um, on those pieces as well. So that's another option with the stamps. Now, there's a couple things that we're going to do different tonight. Let me set those down. Um, Normally what we've done, for those of you who have been in for the lives before, is I would show some items and I'd kind of joke that we were having commercial breaks um, of items that were for sale. And then you guys would comment and say that you wanted a certain item number. And over the last couple of weeks, I've had some people that have asked for itemized receipts and things. And, and the way that it was set up is you just went in and, and entered the dollar amount that you owed. And, and it was fine, and I understood why people were asking for the receipts, but it was another step that I had to do. So what I did this week and we're going to try is almost all of the specials are on the website. And so if you scroll back to the very first post, um, you'll see the, the comment that I made that has a link there. That will actually take you right into all of the specials tonight that we've got. They're all set up in there. You click on there, you add them to the shopping cart, you pay online, and you will get an itemized receipt emailed right to you. So we're going to give that a try tonight. I do have a couple of items here that aren't up on the website that you will be able to comment on, and I'll let you know when those items come up. There's one, there's actually two items, and they're limited quantities, um, and I didn't put those up on the website. So um, I'll let you know on those. Mystery box. We do have mystery box tonight, and I see several people commenting that they are interested in the mystery box. For those of you who are new to this, the way the mystery box works is you just let my wife, Janine, who's sitting across from me here, know that you're interested in the mystery box. And she's over there quickly writing everybody's names on a slip of paper. She's going to throw them in a bowl. And when it comes time for the mystery box, we're going to draw out um, names for the mystery box. And I won't tell you what's in the box, um, but I'll give you hints as to what is in that box. And so tonight's box um, features a lot of new items. We've got a lot of new items we're adding to our website. So it's got a lot of the new items, and it's got some classic items as well. And so the mystery box is normally $35. It's usually about a $100 value. And then it fits into a medium flat rate shipping box, and so it's $15 for shipping, so a total of $50. Um, and if if we open that mystery box and the person whose name was drawn, they say, you know what, that's not uh, that's not something that I can use, um, we will gladly 
draw another name out of the box. we've we've always got a lot of people who are who are interested in the mystery box. so i'm not concerned that we're gonna get stuck with it because we've got a lot of people that always are very anxious to get those. so um so if you want to get into the mystery box comment now and janine will put your name in there so um let's get started working with the stamps um i know some of you have stamps that are on wooden blocks some of you have these foam back stamps and i'm going to show you these are some brand brand new designs and these foam back ones are kind of nice because they're flexible and when i get into the bigger size stamps like this it gives me the ability to flex these stamps to get into crevices and things things like this bowl let me bring this back up here. I'm going to flip the camera down here so you guys can see a little bit better here. Um, things like this bowl that has a rounded edge, if I had a big wooden block stamp and I tried to stamp on there, it wouldn't flex with the contour of the bowl. The nice thing with these foam stamps is I can press these and they will follow the edges. I can wrap them around the edge of a bowl as well. And um, you can peel the rubber part off of the wood block stamps, you know, peel that away that's glued on there. Um, they're kind of flimsy and you just have to be careful when you're positioning them. These foam back ones are nice because they're thicker. I can take my fingers like this, I can position it, I can press it, and I'll kind of show you all the steps on that as well. So um, this is, we're primarily going to be working with those tonight. I do have some little wood block um, stamps as well, and I've got lots of of different designs and, and shapes and things that we're going to use here. Um, I'll show you with different colors, how to load them with multiple colors, um, how to add color on top of them, um, and all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm going to set the finished sample aside here, and I'm going to grab a, a bisque piece. And what we're going to do first is we're going to do a wash on the background of this one and this is just one of the methods to get a colorful background and then we're going to do an all over stamping design but sometimes i like to block out areas and so you can use things like painter's tape to block out sections where you don't have any color so you'll have a white strip on the piece so i'll take the painter's tape and i'm just going to add a diagonal line on top of here and i want to make sure that the edges of this are really pressed well so i'm going to run my finger over this quite a bit to make sure that the edges of the tape are down i had already earlier today i had damp sponged these pieces so that um, any dust or anything that was on them was off and it also gave time for the pieces to dry so that the tape would stick really well you don't want to take a wet sponge on here and sponge this off and then whoops sponge it off and then um, try to get the tape to stick to it because it may not stick very well. So make sure that you do any damp sponging ahead of time to get dust and things off. So I'm just going to do two strips of tape on here. I'm going to leave a little space in between. I'm going to lift this up and get it a little bit straighter. Let me turn this so I get this on here even. There's a question whether you can ship a mystery box to Canada. Um, that's a good question. Mystery boxes can go to Canada, and I just had one go there um, a couple weeks ago, and I want to say it was $58 for shipping rather than $15 for, for shipping going into Canada. Unfortunately, Canada is very costly for us to ship to from the US. So um, if you want to put your name in for the mystery box, I can get you a quote on the shipping um, if your name happens to get drawn. But I will warn you, it's it's it was it's pretty costly. All right, so I've got the tape pressed down really well. And you can work with different types of colors. And tonight I'm going to work with um, Colors for Earth they're color concentrates. And I'll talk a little bit about different types of, of colors, um, different options that you have for doing backgrounds. Um, so products like Stroke and Coat 
are a glaze. They have frit in them, and if you've worked with them or um, concepts, fun strokes, they fire out shiny if you put three coats on. Two coats, they're shiny, but maybe a little bit streaky. One coat, they're more like a, a one-stroke translucent color, and they may not be real shiny, um, but they're they're fritted. So they've got glass in them, so when they're fired, they come out shiny. And this will work for the background, um, but it is a little bit chalkier, and so you have to be careful when you do your stamping. If you do just a wash with this color, sometimes when you press that stamp down, if this color isn't real dry, when you lift the stamp up, it'll pull the color off. And it can happen with any of these colors. But because this is chalkier, I found in workshops that it has more of a tendency to do that. The other thing is the technique I'm gonna do with the washes, when you use a product like Stroke Encoder Concepts, um, because these are designed for three coats to get solid coverage, if you thin this down to create the watercolor wash effect, um, I wouldn't use like a real pastel color because you're diluting it and putting the equivalent of about a half a coat on rather than one coat, two coats, or three coats. And so a real pastel color is going to be real washed out. So I usually go with a darker color than I want. So if I want a light blue in the background, I'll go with a darker blue. Or if I want a purple in the background, I won't go, or a lavender, I'll go with a deeper purple color in the background because I'm diluting it. Um, designer liner is does not have frit in it. This is basically colored slip. It's highly concentrated clay. And so it is designed for line work, but you can also use that to do things like brush strokes. You can do washes in the background because it's concentrated. Um, you can create watercolor looks and things with it as well. Um, but that is clay-based, and so it will have a little bit of a, a chalkiness to it. Um, and then there are products like Colors for Earth, their color concentrates. And these are like a, a Duncan Easy Stroke. If you have Easy Strokes, they'll work the same way. And these are basically pigment suspended in a medium that, that makes them liquid, makes them adhere to the piece, um, and they're super, super concentrated with color. So you can thin those down and create watercolor effects and translucent looks and brush stroke work or you can use them with a liner and get nice opaque lines and things. And so I'm gonna to work tonight with the color concentrates, um, but you can use the other colors. Just be aware of kind of the chalkiness and make sure that they are really dry before you go with the stamps um, on top of them because the color might wanna pull back. So I'm gonna work with um, this, there's kind of a light yellow and um, tangerine peel. And so, um, because these are so concentrated, I'm going to put them in a little bowl here, and I'm going to add water. So I'm going to add um, one part color to about two parts water. So I've got a bowl of water here. I'm going to take a sponge, and I'm just going to squeeze water in here to create a very fluid color. And I'm going to use a large mop brush. And this one happens to be one of these Menta brushes. We're adding this brush, this line of brushes to our website, and we're going to have all kinds of sizes and shapes of these. They're a nice acrylic handle brush, and this is a synthetic hair. It feels like a natural hair, but it's actually a synthetic that we developed for our beauty line, um, and it, it works just like a natural hair brush, but it doesn't shed like a natural hair brush. So I've mixed up some of the yellow, and I'm just going to take, and I'm kind of pouncing, this brush on here, going over where the tape is, and I'm going to dip into the orange peel as well and take a little bit of that color and kind of dab wet into wet on here in the background. I'm just going to kind of go back and forth between the yellow and the orange and get kind of a texture to this background wet into wet into one another. So if I want it more orange, I'll dip into more of the orange. If I want it more yellow, I'll go more into the yellow. If I don't like what I've got on there, I can always go back and sponge it off and add more color on top of that. I can leave some areas white if I want, but on this particular piece, I do want everything kind of covered. The back of the piece I'm not concerned about because the back I'm going to probably do 
um, a solid glaze on the back. So I'm just going to go up onto the edge and a little bit more orange in here. And the reason I'm doing this first is I want this to dry good before we go back and do our stamping. Make sure that I go over this middle section. Wherever it gets on the tape, it's kind of repelling, and that's fine. And I can either peel off the tape before I stamp or after I stamp. So if I want these stripes to be solid white with no stamping, I'll leave the tape on throughout the stamping process. Do you carry the colors for Earth? Um, we're actually going to be adding the colors for Earth. We've got the kits up on our website right now, and we will be adding open stock colors soon. It's a, a lot of work putting all of these new products on the site, so little by little we're adding all of the, the colors. We've also added um, a lot of Mako products. We've got all the non-fired colors up now, and we're going to be adding a lot of the fired color. We've got a lot of fired color kits, stroke and coat, and foundations and crystal glazes, jungle gems, um, lots of lots of new products being added. And we, we just got the stoneware line in the other day too of colors. So I'm gonna set this aside to dry. And you can see just by dabbing the brush, I've got kind of a, a textured background on there. I can peel the tape away because I want the stamping to go over these stripes, but I didn't want the color in the background. So I'll peel that away, toss that aside, get rid of my rolls of tape here. And I'm just gently peeling that back. I'm not yanking it and ripping it off of there, but you can see nice crisp lines. I have one little bitty area here where a little bit of color bled under. I can usually take a little brush with some water and kind of wipe over that and kind of wash that color away. All right, it's, it's dark now from the water on there, but when we go back to this and do our stamping on here, we won't see that color. While that dries, I'm gonna show you guys how to do stamping, basic stamping on here, and then we're gonna add color to some, and I'm gonna do leaves on piece as well, and the leaves will um, get colored in after. I'm going to grab two different plates here. I've got one that is um, got a little bit more of a dip in it to show you how the stamps are flexible. And then I've got one that's a coop that just kind of flares up on the edge here. So one of the biggest problems that I encountered when I would do workshops on the road was um, I started out using those sponge dabbers on the stamps, and what I found was people were pressing so hard with that color on there that they would get colored down in the stamp design. So I started playing around with these rollers, these little rollers with color, and they come in a pack of three. And of course, I've got these on my website. They're on sale for $5.99 for the set of three. Um, it comes with three sponge rollers in there. And with the sponge roller, instead of pressing and forcing color down into the stamp, you just roll it across the top of the stamp and that makes it um, so that the color doesn't get down in there. Now, I've had people in workshops get too much color on their sponge roller and they end up making a mess. So I'm using the black color concentrate and putting a puddle of that out on my tile. My sponge roller is dry. I don't want this wet because if it's wet, you're going to have the colors going to want to bleed down in on the stamp. And as I load the sponge roller, I'm going to roll it through the color. And I'm going to kind of purposely try to scoop up some color here. And you have to, yeah, it's hard to see in the camera, but you can see a little bit of, if, if I see puddles and shiny areas on that roller, or I see bare areas like this, I tell the person, go back and roll it some more. Now, they, they tend to roll back and forth like this. And sometimes they, they do it in such a small spot that only half of the roller is actually rolling. So I tell them, go back and forth across the tile or across the plate that they're working with. And then pull it just in one direction. So pull it toward yourself or just push it away from yourself. So I'm lifting and I'm rolling toward myself. And that way, that sponge roller 
is completely rolling around and around and around, and I get the color even in that, that sponge roller. So if I look at it and I see bare areas that are white, or I see real shiny wet areas, I tell them to go back and roll it out. You're, you're probably, I'm probably rolling it way more than I need to here, but you don't want to just roll it three times and then start going on your stamp. You want to roll at least a dozen times on there um, to get that uh, color worked in. Now, when the stamps are brand new, sometimes they have a little bit of kind of a, a glossiness to them. Usually if you take and you rub them on your pants or on a towel, um, it'll kind of rough up that surface. So I'm just rubbing the stamp on my pants to get any of that oil or anything off of there that might cause the color to repel. When you start rolling the color on the stamp, I don't want to see your finger pressing down really hard as you roll across on there. Because again, that's going to force the color down into the stamp. So I'm kind of holding it on the sides here. If my finger does go up on the top, which it has a tendency to, I'm not pressing really hard. So you want to just kind of gently go across the top of the stamp and roll the color. And you can see that color going onto the stamp design. And I want to roll back and forth gently. I'm not pressing down to make sure that I get good coverage over the whole stamp. And you want to work quickly with these stamps. And then the nice thing with the foam back is I can lift this stamp up. I can position it. And I'm going to hold it down with a couple fingers and then use my thumb or other fingers to press that stamp on the other side. And I want to go over it several times to make sure that I press it good. Then I'll hold it on that side and then press on this other side. I usually discourage people from dragging their fingers back and forth across the stamp because they have a tendency to then drag the stamp and have it slip or slide. So pressing straight up and down with your fingers is probably the best way to do it. You can't really overpress. Um, as I lift it up, I kind of lift it to make sure that the area of the design is filled in good so that if I come across a spot as I lift it that isn't, I can put the stamp back down. If I just lift it up, it's impossible usually to reposition that stamp on top. Um, you can do designs. And so this one, I'm just going to kind of do a strip of this same stamp going across the plate. And I can immediately go back and I can re-roll the stamp. Um, how often do you reload the sponge roller? You'll get to notice when you don't have color getting on the um, stamp. And then you can put more color out on tile. But you can usually do quite a few stamps without having to reload with more color. And again, I'm kind of overpressing on here. And when I say that you can't overpress, once that color hits the bisque, it pretty much soaks in and, and dries almost immediately because that, that bisque is so porous that it sucks the color up. So if you press and press and press on there, you don't have to worry about the color oozing out and filling in unless you have way too much color on your stamp. But it that color pretty much um, is on that, that bisque and dries. So um, if the color, if, if you're getting bleeding out, it's either you're getting too much color on the stamp or your sponge roller might have areas, when I said before, I look for areas that are shiny, that like there's a puddle of color. Um, a big gob or big puddle of color on that sponge roller will fill in your stamp design and you'll get kind of streaks and things. So, How are you able to, to not get fingerprints on there? How am I able to not get fingerprints on there? <laughs> um, as far as if, if I'm touching this, I have to be careful if I've got some color on my fingers. Um, and so by picking up on the edge of the stamp, I'm really not getting color on my hands. But I do have to, I do have a little bit on there. I just have to be careful that I'm not getting it on the piece. There is something that we're going to do that we can disguise if you get a little speck of color somewhere. Because sometimes when you go back to wipe off, um, the color will soak into the bisque a little bit. And it's hard to wipe it away. And so we do a speckling on there. And I'm actually going to have Janine, I forgot to put 
a fan brush out here and I'm gonna have her go in the back room and the brushes on the wall mm -hmm. there are fan brushes and there are some that are like a stiffer bristle second row I think down um, they're they're more of a stiffer hog bristle instead of that real soft hair um, and I'm going to show you guys we're going to speckle all of these pieces when when we're done now I can leave this piece and just do these three stamps on here I can go back and I can add more stamps if I wanted to continue with this same design I could go and fill in now notice how I go off of the edge on some of these pieces I'm not concerned about getting a lot of times people want to start in the middle and work out from there um, I generally start at one edge and work my way across perfect thank you um, so I could add more designs in here I could add other stamps in here when I did this bowl I kind of started out with this stamp going across and then I added some more stamps on the other side so I could take another stamp and add it in here um, but you don't really you got the idea of how to do the stamping on here of doing individual designs like this when I'm done with the stamp um, I can wash that off and I just run it under a faucet and I have an old toothbrush there but a little a little tip for you guys if you look at the stamp you can see on this side where I had stamped off the edge of the plate this color didn't stamp notice how shiny that is on there notice how dull it is on the rest of the stamp so it's easy to see when I reload this stamp I'm going to just roll half of it here because people always ask do I have enough color on here and the way to know is look at how on this side where I just applied the color it's nice and shiny and it's dull on this side so kind of look at that stamp as you roll the color on and look for the shiny areas is this Duncan best this is actually this plate is a, is a piece that I cast it can be done on any type of of this pieces um, so wash it off when you're done um, in the workshops when people are using stamps and they you know do this and they get I'm gonna try to really muck this up they get so much color down in all of those areas and they need to wash this up I will usually take a paper towel without water and I'll try to dab and get that color picked up in that area I don't like to introduce water on the stamps because what can happen is if they start taking these stamps and washing them off and then somebody else goes to use it and there's puddles of water down in the details when they go to stamp on their piece the colors gonna all bleed out on there so if you get an area that it's too thick just dab it out with a paper towel and reload that color on there now you have to be careful because the couple minutes that I took to wipe that off on there the color is starting to dry over on this edge of the stamp so if you have to pause before you lift it up and press it down on the piece roll back over the entire piece to make sure that the color is um, wet on there um, one other thing that I, I should mention a lot of times in workshops I catch people trying to hold the stamp in their hand and rolling on there and what can happen is your your hand can kind of um, bowl like this and so your stamp isn't laying flat I always tell people put that stamp on a flat surface when you do your rolling don't try to hold it in your hand to do that always have it on a flat surface so the stamp isn't bending because if it bends and I'm rolling over the top of this there's a good chance I'm gonna get colored down in where I do not want the color Someone asked about where they can get the rollers and then another person commented you have it on your site. Yeah, they're on the site. And if you scroll back up to the very first comment on here, um, the question was about if, if we sell the rollers. They are on the site. And um, I purposely put this right here as well. So that, that is the, my website is learnfiredarts.com. And the very first um, thing on the, on the home page if you scroll down a little bit there's a, a box there that says live events and you click on that and it takes you right into the um, live event specials and there's all of the products that I'm using and then there's some of the products from last week that I put in there as well so that you guys could see um, those other products I'm going to show you guys the um, leaf stamps here I got to grab these leaves we came out with 
earlier this year. And there's maple leaves, oak leaves, and kind of a traditional leaf. And so to create things like this box, we're going to stamp first with the black. Notice all those little speckles in the background. That's not a glaze. That's the black color concentrate that we're going to kind of speckle on top of there. So I'm going to pull some of these leaves. They come on a little um, piece of, of plastic. You can peel those off, and you can see there's different degrees of detail on these leaves and spacing. When, when we came out with these, I said, I want these leaves that are really detailed and kind of have a skeletal um, feel to them. And so we came out with all of these designs. I'm going to peel all of these off here. Are oh yeah, absolutely. So the, the question is, can the rollers be cleaned and reused? Absolutely, they can be cleaned and reused. Um, once I'm done with the, the roller, I just run it under water and I kind of pinch that and get all of that color out of there. Um, but then if I want to use it again with a different color, I want to take a paper towel or a towel and I really want to squeeze that sponge to get it dry. You don't want to use a wet sponge and I can't stress that enough because people in workshops want to wash that sponge out and then use it right away again um, and, and they really do need to be dry. I usually have multiple sponge rollers so that I don't have to worry about um, that happening or somebody doing that and having the pieces get really uh, wet and, and mucky looking. I'm going to grab a few different textures of leaves here so that you guys can see. Because um, some of these, I was worried that these would fill in with color, but using the sponge roller over the top, and again, I'm just gently going across the top of this. I've got the color on the stamp. I can pick this up and I can position this, hold it with one couple fingers, press on the other side, hold, press that side. And look at how fine that detail is with that stamp. So again, if I press too hard or I use a dabber and I'm dabbing that color on top, there's a good chance I'm going to fill in those details with color and lose my design. So just gently going across the top of the stamp, immediately picking up, holding and pressing. All right, and I can do all different leaves, and I'm just going to do a small section of this plate. And as I, as I add these leaves, I'm turning them in different directions so that they're not all aiming the same way. And I just want the rim of this plate to have the leaf design. Now, if I get a couple little specks of color like this outside of the leaf, that's why I go back and I splatter the stuff because I can disguise that. If you really don't want that speckle in the background, you can take like a Q-tip and as I roll across this, sometimes I'll get a little bit of color over on the edge of the stamp like this. And so I can take my finger and pull that off or I can take like a Q-tip and take that off. Bless you. Janine must have COVID. She's sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I could continue to make my way around this plate doing different leaf designs all around the edge. I'm just going to do three leaves here. wanted to give you an idea of the various um, details in these leaves and how you can get nice crisp lines with those. We're going to set this aside for a minute. Um, and then I want to show you, we'll go back to this, this plate here. So this has has dried pretty well. I'm going to set these aside. And I want to, on this piece, I want to do an all-over stamp design. So I'm going to take a variety of different stamps. I'm going to take some smaller stamps. I don't want snowflakes on this one, so I'm going to set that aside. There's a set that has these two round stamps, I love these as fillers. There's one with a paisley and a heart. I love those as, as fillers. So these are the stamps that I'm going to work with. And I'm going to kind of just set these out here. So I've got them all accessible. 
I'm going to just reload my sponge roller here a little bit because it's been sitting. Again, I'm rolling it in one direction toward myself to make sure that it's loaded really well. And I'm going to start out with larger stamps first. And I'm going to apply the color to the stamp. Someone commented that they use regular black underglaze for stamping, but where you're using seems to have much more pigment. Yeah, if you use like an underglaze, like a, a three coat underglaze, like a, a cover coat or a UG underglaze, those are clay based underglazes and they're designed to get opaque coverage. They're designed for three coats. Products like the Color Concentrates um, and Easy Strokes are just really concentrated and only require one coat. Even using light colors, if I, and I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit, how to use um, multiple colors on a stamp at a time. Um, even pastel colors and the color concentrates will show up really well. All right, see that stamp now, I'm going over the white area and over my wash color in the background. So I'll end up taking this, I can do you know, this stamp and do it multiple times randomly on this piece, or I can go back and forth between the stamps. So I'll pick out my next stamp. I'm gonna load a little bit more color on here because as I talk so much, the color does tend to dry up a little bit in the sponge roller and I don't want to take and dip it in water. Can't stress that enough that you do not want to use water. Normally I would probably already have this piece completely done, but I'm talking a lot in between here. How about mason stains? Mason stains are basically a, a powder pigment. And if you just mix those with water, I'm, I'm not sure that they would work the same way because these have um, like a binder in them that has the color adhere really well. I'm not sure if mason stains, I've never worked with them for a technique like this. Um, I'm not sure if you just add them to water, um, you would need probably some type of a binder in there to get them to really stick well. And if you're gonna do like washes on top of these, which is something I'm gonna show you on the leaves, um, I wouldn't recommend that because I know that they, they definitely would bleed without that binder in there. Now you'll notice I overlapped the stamp here. And so this is when I do an all over design, I just go back and forth with various stamps and I start with one, it doesn't really matter where I start on the piece and then I work out from that stamp. So I'll keep pressing. How about acrylics? Acrylics, you know what, you can use acrylics with these. You just want to make sure that you wash the stamps off because the acrylic will tend to um, dry quickly and they'll be harder to wash off after, um, after they dry. So just make sure that you clean the stamps off and don't leave them sitting with the color in there and wash out the sponge roller as well. So I'm just working with various stamps. And again, I'm working out and I'm overlapping each of these slightly. And look at how on the rounded edge of this plate, I really make sure that I press good down in that groove to make sure that that stamp gets pressed against the surface. Find one here that I haven't used. Um, now we're going to throw this flower design in here as well. Oops. Guess I'm out of the camera. I got to look up at the screen and make sure that I'm in the camera. Now I've got all of these stamps on my website and they are all on sale. You'll see all of the different designs there. Um, the hearts and paisleys and the little round ones come together. There are some set assortments there as well. Um, all right, I'm gonna go back to this original design.
And sometimes the stamp, you know, I've got just a little area on the edge here that I can use just the edge of a stamp to fill in. And you'll see as I, I get to the other side here, this is where I might start taking, where I've got smaller spaces, I might take the heart and press that one in here. And then I'll take the paisley and kind of press that in there. So don't think of this necessarily as a heart shape. It works great if you're looking for a heart shape, but to fill in some spaces, I can turn the stamp in any direction and use it as a filler. Someone's asking about the numbers on your stamp. Yeah, the numbers on the backs of the stamps are the item number. So this is ST4 is, and you'll see the, the Paisley also has it on there because both of those stamps come together in a set. So see that heart just fills in that area. Then I'm going to take the Paisley. And I'll use that to fill in this space. And I can just continue. And so, you know, I'll kind of look at, okay, you know, this stamp was used way over here. I can now use that one on this side to fill in. I'm just going to fill in the, the last part of this. I think you guys are getting a pretty good idea of how this is working. And I want to leave a little space in the middle here to show you how to fill in areas like that. Uh, let's see, use this Italian tile one. And it actually goes pretty quickly. And I don't need to roll the whole thing because I know it's not going to take the whole stamp to fill in that space. So I only rolled about three quarters of the stamp. All right. Now, when I'm left with a little space like this, that's where these little round ones come in really handy to fill in a spot. Or these little round ones can also be used for that. Let me open these up. These have lots of cool little designs. Or these new square ones. I haven't even had an opportunity to use these yet, but some of these little designs would be great using a couple of these to fill in some spots. So I'm going to take one of these, roll the color on. Fill in that spot. I might go up on the edge here. Um, what cone does your stamp color fire to? Um, the, the color concentrates can go um, to a, a low fire like an 06, or they can go all the way up to cone 6. And then someone just asked, heart and paisley stamp kits, so do I order now on the website? You can, or you can go in after the, the live. Um, we're not going to run out of the designs, and if we do, we'll get some more in to fill all the orders. I know some of you are waiting for some orders from last week. Um, last week we had so many orders for the tree cones. Today we got the last of the tree cones made. They'll go in and be fired tonight. Um, the rubber leaves came in today. Um, the Mako order came in. Um, we're still waiting for the a couple of you are waiting for the gold extruders. Those are coming. Um, and there's, oh, the clay cutters too. We sold those clay cutters. We sat on inventory of those for um, a year and a half. And then I used it in the live. And we sold out of all of them. And I ordered a ton more of those. So those will be coming soon as well. But we'll have a lot of orders going out tomorrow and into next week. Um, there is someone who has quite a few different questions, and maybe you can just summarize it. it okay. Says, where did it go? Oh. Did it disappear? Um, I don't see it. It was like, what colors are you using, and something about the clear glaze, and I don't know, maybe just can you go over like the... 
Okay, so Janine said that part of the question was about the colors I'm using and the clear glaze and things, but she can't find that that comment now. Um, but, um, oh yeah, and the Rakutongs are waiting on. Um, so we're working with Colors for Earth color concentrates with the stamps because they're really concentrated and I can get nice opaque coverage with those. Um, we're going to do speckling with those as well. And then you have the option of either firing the piece to set the colors and then apply your clear glaze. If you're brushing the clear glaze or you're dipping the clear glaze, um, if you've got your own kiln, it doesn't hurt to fire the piece to set the colors. And then when you clear glaze, you don't have to worry about smearing anything. Um, if you are brushing the clear glaze on, make sure you use a very soft fan brush and just kind of lay the color on and leave it. Don't brush and brush and brush and brush because as these colors get wet, they will tend to want to, to streak and pull. So just kind of lay that glaze on and, and leave it. Don't brush too much. Um, if you're dipping, just be careful. Um, make sure the pieces are really dry. Um, you know, if you have glaze that's running off of there and you're tipping and turning that back and forth and you got puddles of clear glaze running on there, you do risk those colors kind of um, pulling and moving with that as, as well. So if you've got a kiln and can set those colors on there, just fire it to like an 04, then clear glaze it, fire it to an 06. If you're working with stoneware finishes, um, you might be going to um, like a cone five, cone six for your, your glaze firing on okay, there. Okay, so Paula did comment the color concentrates will fire to cone six, and then someone said six or O six. Yeah, it is, it is. they will go as hot as cone six. So you can do it at O six on earthenware pieces. They will also work on stoneware pieces to cone six. And Paula says the greens do turn a little brown, um, but the reds do fire red. It is amazing, the reds, how well they fire out nice and bright, bright red. So, and I think Paula's got some, um, she might have on her, her site, and I'm not sure if she's got showing them fired to cone six and um, what the colors look like. But most of them do fire out pretty true to color at 06 and all the way up to cone six. And you use these on wet clay? Yeah, so the, these stamps can also be used to do impressions in wet clay. Um, I've got a lot of projects and I can post some pictures on here. I didn't want to do clay and the stamping in the same night because it would get to be a little bit messy to do it. But I've got some turtles and some vases and stuff where I've used them to make impressions in, in wet clay and they work really, really cool. And that will be a future live, um, possibly next week. Um, I figured we would piggyback the stamps on one another. So next week I was planning to show them using the stamps in clay so that if you guys get stamps, they're very versatile, great for jewelry and stuff as well. All right, so basically I would continue to do my stamping over this platter, doing an all over design like this, overlapping um, the stamps. And I tried to fill in. And so as I was talking, I was using the small stamp up on this edge here, you can see I could go back with, you know, another stamp and just do this little area up here. Um, I'll end up going with a sponge with black around the edge of this piece. And I'm just going to wring my sponge out here, pick up some of the color on my tile. There's a comment um, or a question. If you want to only do one stamp in the middle of a plate, would it be okay to do on greenware? You can, but just remember that you're working on greenware. Question is, can you stamp on the greenware if you're just doing like one stamp in the middle? Just remember that it's greenware, it's soft, and you know, you're gonna be pressing kind of hard with that stamp that you don't break the piece. <clears throat> now on the edge of this piece, I'm just taking some of that black color concentrate and I'm getting it lightly in the sponge and I'm just lightly dabbing around this edge. So I'm not real concerned. You can see these little areas over here kind of get covered up with the black edging on there. The reason I don't band on this piece is because it's oval shaped. I'm going to show you on a round plate how to do the banding, but I would continue to do my stamping on here, band around the edges, and then I'm going to take a stiff bristled fan brush. So there are soft fan brushes that are goat hair, or this happens to be a synthetic goat, which is real soft. And then there are fan brushes that are real stiff. And this is bristle, this is hog bristle. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the black 
color concentrate and I'm just kind of picking up some of the dry color on here, which is another nice thing. These colors, even once they dry on your tile, you can take water and reconstitute them and, and create watercolor effects. They're, they're great for blending and brush strokes and things. But I've got a little bit of color in there. I don't want this dripping with color. And I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to pull it back so that the bristles will flick toward the piece. And then I'll get, and I'm going to go over onto this area here where I don't have the stamp and do the speckling um, to give you guys an idea of how the speckling looks. But I'll do this over the, the top of the whole thing. Chances are if there's a little spot in here where I got a little black on the edge of the stamp, nobody's probably going to see it anyway. But I still like to go over and do my speckling. I usually hold the brush and my finger at least about six inches away from the piece. In workshops, I find that people have a tendency to get closer and closer and closer to the point that they're practically hitting the brush on the piece, and you don't want that. So I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see. Got a little loose, a couple loose bristles on there. That was a new brush. So you can see that speckling on the white area there where I don't have the stamping, and then it's kind of all over on this design as well. So I'll let it dry. I'm okay brushing clear glaze on here, um, but again, if you want to set that color, you can fire it to like an 04, even an 06. You can stick it in an 06 firing to set those colors on there. All right. So that's kind of how we do that piece. And then the back side of this, I'm just going to do with a black glaze. And this one happens to be a piece of Duncan disc. I just got a mold for this. It was a Mako mold that somebody had of this one. All right. I'm going to set this aside. And I want to show you guys, we're going to go back to the leaf design now. I've let that black dry. And I want to add color to these leaves. So if I want to do fall colors, I've got orange, I've got yellow, I've got red, I've got purple, I've got green in there. Um, I can use the color concentrates to do that. And I will thin them down a little bit. Or on this, I can use products like Stroke & Coat as well. And this is a brand new bottle of it. And I forgot to peel the little... Uh, tag off of it here. Can, can you sponge the clear on? Um, could you sponge the clear on? That's a good question. Um, that could be done. It does make me a little bit nervous because sometimes with a sponge, you're you're pressing quite a bit, and you just would have to really be careful. Oh, the orange is brand new as well. You would really have to be careful that you don't kind of slide the sponge at all when you um, press down on there that you would end up smearing any of that color. Can these techniques be used on glass? These techniques can be used on glass and that is a different live as well but the color concentrates work great on glass. Oops, grab the orange again, I need the red. Um, they work great on glass. Um, you do need to cap them though. So they need to go between glass. So if I was using a piece of white glass and I did design work on it, then I would need to cap it with either clear glass or clear frit on that piece um, and fire that. All right, and I brought brushes out here and then I took some of them away. So I'm gonna use um, a liner here to apply the color. I would usually use a round or a liner to apply the color. And once that black is dry, if I brush and brush and brush over this, that color can smear. So I'm just working with some stroke and coat colors here. So I've got sun kissed, I've got orange appeal, I've got um, hot tamale and fruit of the vine purple. And so I'll usually dip into the color. And these are designed that one coat will give you a translucent effect Two coats give you more opaque, three coats generally pretty opaque. So I want these leaves to be real washed out like watercolor. So I'm going to start on one of the leaves and I'm just going to brush some of this yellow on. And then I'm immediately going to dip into the next color into the orange. And I'm going to kind of work this wet into wet and blend this right on top of the leaf. So the orange kind of blends into the yellow. Then I'm going to dip into the red. And I'm going to take that down the other side of the leaf. 
and I'm not over brushing this that I end up softening the, the black and smearing it. And it really only takes one coat of this color of a product like Stroke and Coat or Concepts um, over, the, over the top. And so that's it. That leaf is, is done. And then I'll go to the next leaf. And I'm not washing the brush out in between here. I'm just going right from one color to the next because I'm blending these colors wet into wet. Now, if I use the color concentrates, because they're so concentrated, I will want to thin them a little bit with water to do this technique. Um, and I found in workshops, sometimes people get their piece really super wet with products like the, the Easy Strokes or the Color Concentrates. And so that's why I'm using um, the Stroke and Coat for this, because I don't need to thin it down. I'm just putting one coat on the top of this. And again, I just kind of pick an area of the leaf to start and go right into one color into the next and blend. So I'm working quickly one leaf at a time. I don't want to go through. I had somebody in a workshop one time. They went through and they did all the yellow areas on all of their leaves. And then they were going to go back and do all the orange areas. And I'm like, nope, just work on one leaf at a time because you want those colors to be wet as you blend the other colors into them. And you can do the same technique with different shades of greens and yellows. All right. I can do my splattering on here and get my fan brush out. I'm going to get a little bit more black on my tile. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that black and blend it out because I don't want so much color in there that I've got big drips coming off on there. And then I can lightly speckle over the top of this and, and I will get the specks on top of the leaves, around the leaves. We're going to let this dry for a couple minutes and I'm going to show you guys how to do the banding on here then. So that's that's it. So I would just continue to work my way around and do my design around the edge of that plate. I did that on the top of this box and then I did it also on the sides of the box. And then I did the, the edge of that all black. Very cool piece. Now, this one that I showed you guys at the beginning of the webinar, this was doing the leaves, basically the black stamping like I did on this plate. I did the black stamping all over, I did my speckling, and then I clear glazed it, I fired it, and then I went back with the Azura markers and did dabbing and blending of color. So I blended the yellow, the orange, and the red on the leaves. Um, and then in the background, I did, I colored in blue and then I dabbed with the blender and dabbed with some yellow in the background as well. And because those markers are translucent, you see the black of the stamps coming through on there. So I left part of this done, part of it not done. But just a black and white design is really cool too. Can do some, some pieces with just the black and the white. All right. So I'm going to set this aside to dry so I can go back and band that. Adding color into your designs. Um, you just saw painting in on the leaves, how we did that. You can also use products like Mako's Designer Liner. And so these are colored clay. I talked about that at the beginning. They come in a bottle with a little pin in a metal tip. Pull that pin out and set that aside. Always give the bottles a shake to get all the air worked out. And then I go on to another surface and I give them a squeeze to get that air bubble out of the inside. Um, a lot of people think when they see these designs and they see all the color in a piece like this, they think, oh my gosh, that must have taken forever to put all that color in there. It really doesn't. And so on this one, I'll go through and I'll do all of my areas that I want my yellow, and it's really just tapping, just tapping in dots. My gosh, we've got a ladybug crawling across the table. It's 10 degrees outside right now. Um, do you have the gourd available? The gourd? Uh, the mold for the gourd? I don't know. <laughs> There's, um, 
Okay, that's Luann asking. There's the clay there, puzzling. Uh, oh, the gourd that I did the stamping on. I do pour that gourd, Luann. There's four different sizes that I pour. And so that's something you can private message me if you're looking for it in, in BISC. So I'm just tapping in dots, and you can hear probably the little tapping sound. And I'm hardly even squeezing this bottle because I just want little dots of this yellow, and I'm not going to do this whole design. I'm just going to do some sections in here. But what I do is I look for areas where I can fill in some color. When I'm done, I make sure that that pin goes back into the top of the bottle, and then I'll go to my next color. She was actually talking about the finished piece. Oh, the finished piece? No, that, that finished cord got sold in one of the other lives. Mm -hmm. So I can take and I can add some orange dots in this large area. And you just kind of play around, and it's just tapping the dots. A lot of times I'll work on a turntable or a banding wheel. Um, I can go back and I can fill in in some of these stamp areas. I might decide that these areas I actually want solid orange and so I can squeeze out more color and just kind of drag that tip and move that color around. A lot of people make the mistake with designer liner that they think it's a dimensional product. And it's not. It is designed for doing detail line work and things. Um, it's not designed for squeezing out real thick and getting heavy applications. But there I just squeezed out and kind of dragged the tip around. I didn't use a brush. And I got um, areas filled in solid. I'm going to take some of this darker blue and I can find areas where I want to tap in a little bit of the blue. Now you can also take, and I'll show you on another part here, where you can take and blend colors together. So let's say, um, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to another area over here that's got a bigger area so it'll be easier for you guys to see. So if I wanna do a blend of the darker blue and the brighter blue, I'm gonna have both colors ready and I'm going to squeeze out color. And again, I'm not squeezing it real heavy. I'm squeezing it thin. I'm kind of dragging that tip across and I'm filling in part of this with the dark blue. And then I'm going to go with the light blue and start at the top and drag it. And so I want to work again wet into wet. And I can just kind of drag that tip of the light blue into the dark blue and kind of drag those colors so that I get a blend from dark blue to light blue on there. And then while I've got the light blue, I'll go right to this next section. Instead of starting with the dark blue, I'll start with the light blue, apply that, and then I'll go back to the dark blue. And while that light blue is still wet, I drag that into it. Now, sometimes if the color gets a little dry, so if that light blue got real dry as I drag the dark blue into it, it would get kind of chalky and it would fill in that tip. If that happens, if you're squeezing and no color comes out, just use that pin and poke that back into the end to clean that out. Again, give it a shake, give it a little squeeze to get any air out of there and go back to doing your design work. Now the really cool thing about these colors, because they are concentrated colored clay, get my pins back in here, um, and I already lost the pin. Usually those pins are in, I leave them, there's a little plastic bag that comes with the pin and the tip in there. I poke that through the plastic bag so that, um, oh, here it is, so that the um, pins don't get lost. If you do lose them, you can buy um, pins at like a fabric store or Walmart. And um, there's different size pins. I can't remember how many millimeters or what size they are, but um, so once I've got that done, I can go back with another color over the top of that. And even if that blue is wet, I can go back and I can add a dot design 
right on top of that designer liner and I don't need to worry about this bleeding out or anything um, because it's colored clay. So it's not going to flow, it's not going to move in firing. All right. So you can do filling in, dragging colors wet into wet. You can do just tapping designs, goes really fast, filling in. Um, you can also do a combination of products like stroke and coat to fill in solid areas and then use designer liner to do dots and design work on top of that. Um, but it, it's, it's putsy, but it does go pretty fast. And then I will go back and I will do my, my splattering. Apparently we have somebody breaking into the house upstairs. They have. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of the designer liner because now I want some colors in the background. So I'm going to take and I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of the orange designer liner here. I'm going to add just a little bit of water. And I can also do splattering with colors. So I did black on that other piece. I can do black on here, but I can also use the other colors. So the designer liner will work great for this. The color concentrates will work good for the splattering on there. Um, you can use the color concentrates to fill in designs on here too. And, and these work great on glass for filling in um, designs as well. All right. So I'll show you guys banding on this piece and on the other piece. I want to show you one other kind of fun thing with the stamps and so my black roller I'm going to set aside here I'm going to wipe off my color get my bucket of water out here I'll wipe the black off of this tile so I'm going to show you guys how to load the sponge roller with multiple colors and I don't want my tile to be real wet, so I'm going to take and wipe off all that excess water on there. And I'm going to pick a few different colors here. So I'm going to do some purple. I'm going to do some sapphire blue. And we're going to do some tangerine peel. And I've put these out on this tile um, in this order for a reason. Um, I'm going to get one of my medium rollers. So the sponge rollers that come in the set, you've got the large, medium, and small. I find myself using the medium one a lot. Um, the color companies would love it if you'd use the big one a lot because that soaks up a lot of color. If I'm doing a lot of pieces, with one color like black and I've got a whole bunch of pieces, I'll use the big one because it covers the stamps quicker, holds more color, I have to load it less frequently. But if I'm doing one project that I'm, you know, doing 15 stamps on, there's a lot of color that, get, that gets wasted in this one. So that's why I like to use the medium one. Small one works too, but you just need to roll over more. So on smaller stamps, I tend to use the little one and that's why most of the time I'm using the medium one. Um, so I'm going to show you just because it'll be easier in the camera for you to see. I'm going to use the big roller. I purposely put the colors out here the way that I did, um, kind of like a, two eyes and a nose on here, because I want to load the middle of the sponge with the orange color. And I probably should have put more color out here because I'm using the big sponge. So again, I'm pulling this toward myself and I'm trying to get the middle of the sponge loaded well with color. Now notice how it's really thick here, but then it's really light there. And so I want to get this evened out. So I'm pulling a lot toward myself and it's starting to get evened out on there. I may have to add a little bit more color because this is such a big roller. And once I get the middle of the sponge loaded, then I'm going to take and I'm going to roll this edge in the purple. And I'm going to roll this edge in the blue. And then I'm going to go in one spot on the tile and look at as I roll that. So back and forth, and then I will just do that pulling motion 
toward myself to get that color blended really well in the sponge. Again, I look for areas that are sopping wet and, and dripping with color, and I look for areas where um, I can see the sponge, and it looks like I've got good coverage on here. So I'm going to take, and on a little stamp like this, this roller will cover, whoops, the entire stamp. So I can roll this across, load it up with color, pick it up, and press it on my piece. And lift it up, and I've got from blue to the orange to the, the purple on that stamp. Now if I have a larger stamp, this one I don't have a lot of black on, okay, and the sponge roller, rolling it over, it won't cover the whole stamp. So I'm going to roll on one side, and I've got purple, orange, blue, but then this part of the stamp isn't covered. Well, I don't want to just pick the roller up and move it over because then the purple is going to roll in the blue, and I'm going to get blue in my purple area. So after I roll this half of the stamp, I flip the roller over so that the blue stays in the blue area and then goes orange to purple. So I'm just flipping that roller over so that the blue is always on the blue in the middle of that stamp. And then, do it on this plate. Some of these plates have been stamped about a dozen times and, and washed off. You're probably thinking, why would you put that multicolor stamp now on that piece? But this piece will end up getting washed off and used to demonstrate again. Again, making sure that I press all areas multiple times. And we go from purple to orange to blue to orange to purple. It's not as easy to see in the camera um, that that, but when these colors are fired out, obviously they are much brighter. But that's one way to add color to your stamps, just using the roller loading with multiple colors. Now when I need to put more color in there, I can go back to my roller. I can wipe off this middle area if I need to add more orange. Or I can just add orange in the middle and roll that in there, pick up more blue, pick up, oops, pick up more purple, pick up more blue and continue to roll it in that area to keep that roller loaded with color. If you already did a white glaze fired, could you use the stamps? If you already did a white glaze fired, so if the piece is, if I understand the question, the question is if you've glazed a piece and fired it, could you do stamps over the top of it? You could, um, but you have to be really careful. When you set those stamps down on a slick surface like glass or a glazed piece, they're gonna to wanna to slide more. So you really need to make sure that you hold them down as you press them um, on that surface. Um, the other option would be, Cindy, is you could glaze the piece with like a white glaze and do your stamping over the top with colors like the color concentrates because they're pigment, they don't have clay in them. They will fire into that glaze on there that hasn't been fired and it will fire out um, shiny on that surface. So, um, and you can do brush work and you can do all different things with those on top of there. Products like designer liner, if the piece is glazed and fired or the piece is glazed and not fired and you use designer liner over the top of it, this has clay in it. So what do you think is gonna happen with that? that clay is going to sit on top of that glaze and it's going to be dull and rough. And so that, you could do it on there, but then you would also need to clear glaze it. And depending on your base glaze and stuff, that may or may not be recommended. So, um, you know, understanding what the products are, I find a lot of times in workshops, you know, some people, they, they, they're like, oh my gosh, you're sharing so much information and I can't keep all this straight. But if you understand the difference between these colors and you understand the makeup of them, it makes it a lot easier to understand because when I explain to people that this has clay in it, if I put this on top of a glaze, what's going to happen when it's fired? How does clay fire out? Clay fires out real porous and rough. So if there isn't a glaze over the top of this, it's colored clay. It's going to be rough. This doesn't have clay in it. It's basically pigment in a binder and so it's not going to fire out rough on there. And this is a fritted product. And so this is a glaze and it's not going to fire out real rough on there. 
All right. So I, I, I know that that's a lot to, to understand. I don't get into the chemistry. Some people really get into the chemistry of how colors are made and stuff. And that I'm not interested in um, understanding the getting really deep into all of that type of stuff. Someone who came in late was just wondering what this was done on BISC. This was done on BISC, and the, and the reason I do it on BISC is because um, if you do it on greenware, you're pressing on it, and when you press on it, you run the risk of um, the piece breaking by putting that pressure on there. All right, so I've got a banding wheel here, and I did do, if you didn't see the live, doing banding. Um, it, it's a fun technique. It takes practice. But this is a banding wheel. I can get my fingers underneath here to spin this. This is the motion that I do that I'm kind of pulling with my finger and flicking with my thumb to get this wheel turning. This little rubber pad that I'm doing on the top of here, this is a, a new pad that we introduced not too long ago. It's a rubberized pad that when you put pieces on there, it prevents them from slipping and sliding. Um, you can also do like a wet paper towel on here, um, but these rubber pads really do work nice. And I'm going to raise the the camera up here a little bit. Sorry, it's going to wiggle a little bit as I as I loosen this. And bring this up so you can see a little bit better with the banding. Um, you want to center the piece on the banding wheel. And so I'll usually take like a brush handle or something and put it alongside and I'll start that piece turning. And you can see how off center this piece is by how far away it is from the brush and then it's it's hitting the brush. So anywhere that it hits the brush, I want to take and slide it over a little bit and just continue to do that to get it centered. Um, a lot of times you can look on the underside and you can kind of see um, without the rubber pad on there, there's lines on the banding wheel that you can usually kind of somewhat center the pieces on there. Um, but it just takes a couple minutes to center this. And sometimes pieces are a little warped and you won't be able to get them perfectly centered. For those of you who were in the live where I did the banding, um, I recommend practicing your banding just using a bisque plate with water. And you can practice doing lines on a piece. And if you mess up, it's only water. But the water will turn the piece dark where those lines are. And um, it'll dry. And you can do it again. Um, I'm working with dagger brushes and a lot of people want to do line work with with liners which is great. Liners are wonderful for doing scroll type line work but when you do a banding technique and you're spinning that piece and you're touching that brush down a liner brush doesn't usually hold enough color to be able to do long continuous lines. Dagger brushes on the other hand um, come to a point, they're kind of spear shaped, and I'll show you why that's important in a minute, but they have a bigger body to them so they hold a lot of color, but you can get really fine lines with them. And there's usually multiple sizes, there's usually three sizes, um, just grabbing the different ones here, and there are different hair types. So this one happens to be gold taclon. The advantage to gold taclon bristle is that it holds its shape really well. Most people feel really comfortable with gold taclon because it holds a nice edge, it holds a nice point even when it's loaded with color. Natural hair brushes, um, this one happens to be a, a squirrel blend of hair. Um, this is about a $30 paintbrush um, with the natural hair. Um, these brushes aren't even made anymore. Um, but it's a, a beautiful brush and the advantage to natural hair is it holds a lot of color. But when that bristle gets wet and loaded with color, it's a lot, um, I don't want to say flimsier, but it, it doesn't hold its shape as well. It stays together, but it's a softer bristle so it wants to flop if you've got a real heavy color in there. Um, this one here, this is part of the, the Moderna line or the, the Menta line that we're adding. And this is a synthetic that's made to be like natural hair. And so this will hold a lot more color where a gold taclon won't hold as much color and it releases the color more. A natural hair brush has a tooth to the bristle so it kind of holds the color more. The color doesn't want to flow away from it because gold taclon is basically plastic and so it doesn't have that tooth. This new synthetic 
has a tooth more like a natural hair. So a lot of people feel more comfortable with the gold Taclon. I like the soft hair, the natural hair, or the soft synthetic because it holds more color and I don't have to load the brush as frequently. So since I've got a bunch of blue left on this tile, I'm going to take and load this brush up and I'm going to thin this blue color with water. I need it to be fluid. And, and so one of the reasons I really like the color concentrates for banding is because they're so highly pigmented. And so when I'm thinning this out to about three parts water to one part color, the lines that I get on here will um, be nice and, and opaque and I'll get good coverage. Where a product like Stroke and Coat, Concepts, if I thinned it down this much, my my lines would be so washed out because there isn't as much color. Now, I do try to anchor my elbow to the table, which you guys can't see as well here, but I've got my elbow on the table. I don't want to just hold my arm up. I want to start this piece turning. When that stamp in the middle is going to throw us off, it's good. it looks really not centered right now because that stamp in the middle isn't perfectly in the center. And this brush has that spear shape that I had mentioned. And the reason that is good is because I'm going to bring this brush down and I'm going to touch it to the surface. And that spear shape fits with the direction that my hand is as I turn that on this wheel. And I'm kind of talking slower as I do this um, because I tend to stop talking when I'm actually doing the banding. Um, but you want to touch the brush down and I'm just looking where the brush touches. I'm not trying to follow that line. I'm not looking at the middle. I'd be getting dizzy and probably throwing up if I was watching that, that stamp in the middle of this piece. And so I just touch that brush down. The wheel is turning in the direction that I've got the brush angled. And I just touch that down. And I get my lines. If I want to band all the way around onto the edge of the plate, so if I want to take this, I can kind of turn this brush on its side. I always start out with that first line. Um, on the inside, I band that first, and then I band outward. Because if I um, started on the outside and tried to bring that brush around on the inside, I would probably have that brush skipping across. Now, because I've got a big area here, I'm not thinning the color as much. And look at how nicely that flows onto that piece to fill in that outside edge. And then I can go around onto the outside edge of that plate to get a nice solid blue line on there. When I mentioned before about, I tell people to practice with water. So if you're doing a, just a bisque plate and you just touch that brush down, see that dark line that, that's created there? that's what you're going to get with just water. And so once that dries, that water will go away and you can band some more. All right. Now in the, the oh. potter's wheel for this. Yep, and a potter's wheel works great for that. If you've got a potter's wheel and a foot pedal, you can control that speed on there. Generally, I'm going at a pretty good speed. I don't want to go so fast that my plate flings off of here, but that is where that rubber pad underneath there prevents this piece from sliding. Because once this piece slides and then you try to go back, watch what happens now that I, I slid it over. Because if you try to center it again, you won't get it centered exactly the same. And look at now, I go to band, my line is all over the place and the piece isn't centered anymore. So it's really important that those pieces not slip and slide on there when you're doing your banding. Now I've completely destroyed this plate, and but it all washes off, and I'll reuse this again for another project at another time. Um, I just want to show you guys this piece here was done using all of just these these mini stamps, there's six different ones that, that come in this set. And this was just overlapping all those mini stamps all over to get that really intricate design 
on that piece just using those little ones. These new square stamps, I think, are going to be good for doing little designs like that as well. On this piece here, this one was just done on the bisque, and I just used the one stamp. It's the same design. And on this one, this actually is kind of a deep, kind of a pasta bowl. Um, because the middle of this, the lowest part, was almost exactly the, the size of the stamp, this is one where I did center and I did the one stamp in the middle. And then if you look at this, to get these um, stamps centered, I did one on one side and went to the opposite side. So I'm laying this brush in here so you can see the two stamps. Then I did, so I did like 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Then I did like 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And then I put another stamp in between at 10 o'clock and 5 o'clock. And then another stamp at 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Um, so you don't have to sit there and necessarily measure, but just get an idea of how much space you have. And so a lot of times I'll take stamps without color on them, and I'll be like, okay, if I do one here and I do one here, and on bisque, these usually won't slide as much. And then I do another one here, and I do another one here. Then I've got room to do, yep, I got room to do another one in between those. And so that's usually how I kind of space it out. I'm not sitting there with a measuring tape trying to get it all, all figured out. Um, but I find most of the time just doing random stamping, either covering the whole piece or doing kind of a strip of a stamp, strip of a stamp, and a strip of a stamp like that, um, rather than, because when people sit there and they're like, okay, I'm going to put one in the middle, and I'm going to do one here, and then I'm going to do one there, and they start playing around with it, then all of a sudden they get a spot where there isn't enough room to do a stamp, and then it kind of looks off. Um, so either try to cover the whole thing, find a piece that's big enough that you can space the stamps out. Like um, cutting a pie or a cake on the one. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's like cutting a pie, and that's where start breaking it up and finding your spacing on there. Um, things like the leaves, you find that piece here. Oh, here it is. So that one, I just started out with one leaf and just kind of started to fill in. And you'll see there are areas where I just have a stem of the leaf there, just have a tip of a leaf here. So, you know, start with one and work your way around. Don't do this leaf and this leaf and then try to fill in. It's better to do one leaf at a time and, and work across a piece. On the sides, I just worked my way around on that piece. All right. All right, we have any questions at, at this point? I'll explain a few other things otherwise. Um, there are stamps, like holiday stamps, obviously. This is a, a little late for this year, but for next year, um, there are things like candy canes and snowmen, the pumpkin. I posted some pictures today that showed the pumpkin where I went back in and did some colors on there as well. The snowflakes, you may have seen the snowflake plate that I did that was all in blues. So instead of doing black on the stamps, I didn't want the snowflakes, snowflakes to be black. So I did a wash with different blues in the background like I did on that oval plate with the yellow and the orange. I did a, a light wash of blues in the background. And then I went with some of the, the deeper blues and the purples and did my stamping with those colors. I did like a turquoise, a dark blue, and a purple color and did my snowflakes in different colors on the stamping, and that piece really turned out great. Things like dragonflies, butterflies, um, there's lots of, of different stamps available. And so you'll find those um, on the website, and I'm actually gonna bring it up here to show you guys and kind of walk you through where things are on there. I've got my tablet here, and I've got it on the page. I'm gonna lower the oh, camera here. Um, I did do a little bit of azure in one of the first lives that I did. It was the Christmas tree one. I did show some of the azure, get the reflection out of there from the light. Um, I did do 
um, Azure in there. I do have um, a really good recording on the website, and it happens to be one of the specials in here too that goes through all of the different Azure techniques and steps as well. So when you go to the website, learnfiredarts.com or claypuzzling.com, our old website was claypuzzling.com, um, but because we've branched out into so many other things, um, learnfiredarts.com is the is the new the new site. I'm gonna just turn this light off here and see if I can eliminate that reflection. There we go. Um, so when you go in there, if you just scroll down a little bit, look right here, live events. You'll click on that, and then it's gonna bring up. We do have free shipping on orders over $50 um, in the US 48. If it fits in a flat rate shipping box, um, we'll go to all 50 um, states. And so all of the items that are on sale are here and you just scroll through. There are some of the Azure markers are in there. This is the video and that video is, um, one of the videos can be downloaded and then the longer video is one that needs to be emailed to you and so we email you a link to that video the banding wheel pad is on sale there's back issues of magazines these are all the colors for earth sets and so it has all of the different colors that are in there in the description i'm just going to click on one of these we also pasted paul has got really good information in there about using them on glass and there's all of this information in there that you can read through that explains using them on ceramics, oops, using them on glass, all of that when you click on the, the item. There's a couple of questions. If okay. All right. Um, well, on, while you're on there, who, where can you find the rubber mat for the wheel? That is, I just scrolled past that here. You probably asked that question before I, oops, go back here. Um, and, and I do have some used mats here that I'm, I'm going to sell and I'm going to show you guys in a, a couple minutes. I have a couple things that are one of a kind or limited because they're used and so they're not on the website. But there's the banding wheel. Um, this is the, the rubber mat that is used. They're on sale um, for $14.95. They're half off. Um, you'll find the color kits. So Paul has got three different kits with different colors and they're um, what are they 14 piece sets and I think one is a 13 piece and then she's got a set that has all 40 of the colors in the set um, there's a free download there's the cones from last week we're finally caught up on on those the designer liner we've got sets there's also um, our retreat um, I do a retreat here at the house once a year and um, we've got that coming up hopefully in May of next year that will happen um, but there's $50 off if you register um, after the live for that the dagger brushes the gold taclon ones are here we've got all kinds of color kits from Mako that are on sale um, there's several pages of, of items here and I'll just go through so basically when you find an item that you want you can just click on that item Add it to your shopping cart. Lots of kits, and we've got lots more color. There's the sponge rollers. They're on sale for $5.99. There's the watercolor kits. The acrylic stain kit, we have sold a ton of these. If you guys haven't used Mako's acrylics, they're a great line of colors. We just upgraded this kit. We added seven more colors. It's the full line now. Um, and so we just added it's now 40 colors instead of 33. If you bought the 33-piece set, we did an, an upgrade kit of the seven new colors that you can add to that. Um, that is available on there. And then it goes into all the stamps. And so there's lots of stamp designs on there that you'll see. The stamps are normally $14.99 each. They are on sale for $12.99. If you buy six stamps, if you put in an order for six stamps, we're going to throw in a set of the sponge rollers for free. If you buy 10 stamps, we're going to throw in an extra stamp for free. So if you select 10 stamps in the comments at the end of your order, just put in the item number for the stamp that you'd like for free. If you forget to put that in there, I'll just message you and ask you which stamp that you'd like for free. Um, and if you don't respond, I'll just go through and pick something that I have extra of and, and include that in there. But I'd like you guys to be able to um, pick the items that you would want. So 
Um, okay, can you pause for a couple questions? Sure. Um, okay, how, you showed a pumpkin with the stamping. How big was the pumpkin? The pumpkin, all of the stamps are about the same size. These are all, um, all of the, the general stamps are all about four and a half inches. They're about the size of the palm of my hand. The smaller stamps that come two to a set are, are smaller than that. Um, but that pumpkin is about the same size as, as this stamp right here. I don't have one I, I here thought, in front of me. I'm not sure, but I thought maybe she was showing about a pumpkin, a, the ceramic pumpkin. Did you show a pumpkin with stamps on it? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe I must have missed Yeah, I didn't show a, a pumpkin with stamps on it. If, oh, okay. Then okay. that's not. Okay, and then which kit do you recommend to start with for the Colors for Earth? So the, the kits that Colors for Earth has, um, which one do I recommend starting with? i got to turn this around a second to get back to um, those kits. You know, the one that has all of the colors would be ideal because that gives you, I think it's 40 different colors that comes in the set. Otherwise, kit number one has, um, you know, a good starter assortment of colors so this is kit number four this has all the colors in the set but that is and it comes in one ounce or two ounce sizes and so um that one you gotta click on it here i'm trying to read it upside down and look at it on my screen here um paula suggested kit number one because it has yeah the primary it has the primaries that the kit number one or kit number four are gonna kit number four is gonna give you everything kit number one is gonna give you kind of the basics the blacks the whites the red orange um all of those colors in there so that's a, a good one to start out with does ceramic arts in canada carry your products ceramic arts in canada um they do carry the stamps they carry some of the stamps they don't carry all of them um, they do carry the sponge rollers, um, the brushes, the daggers. If they don't have the daggers, Angela, I was actually going to talk to you about ceramic arts because I know you're you're in Canada. If they don't have those dagger brushes, they have access to all of those dagger brushes. Um, talk to Scott or Brian um, and ask them if they can special order those for you. Um, the colors obviously they carry mako um they don't carry the colors for earth unfortunately um they do carry they carry the shimpo banding wheel which is a, a really nice heavy duty banding wheel they're very heavy and so i've stopped carrying them because the shipping is almost as much as the wheel sometimes but the rubber pad <coughs> whoops <laughs> it was just a plate um the rubber pad is brand new they aren't even probably aware of that yet but i can talk to scott about that as well but if you have questions angela you can just message me and we'll try to work things out that that you can get some things through them and the rubber leaves um they you know they can get those any of those items in for you so if there's other items you're looking for just let me know and and i'll work with scott on that too um okay a couple People are commenting, um, the Kathy, back to this pumpkin, it was a stamp. Can I add it to my order now or on your site? And then Angela commented she'd like the rubber leaves. I, the, they have to go to your site to order the stuff, right? Or yeah, so the rubber leaves, and we just got leaves back in today. Um, they just, the, the rubber leaves that we used last week to do the trees and the gnomes and things, those are all um, back in stock. They, they came in about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Um, so we do have those again but yeah so kathy if you want to add the pumpkin so if somebody's got an order that's sitting here and you just want to add something small to the order um just send me a message and um, i can add that to your order and i still have the link up there where you guys can go in and add the dollar amount um, because if you just go in and order one stamp kathy it's going to charge you shipping on it um, if it's under 50 dollars. and so i can just have you do it through that other link um, so if there are others in that boat where you want to just add one or two small items to an order that you have here, um, I can work that out with you. Just send me a message. I'd be happy to work with you on that. Are the stamp sets different than the single stamps? Um, so the, the stamp sets on the website, there are some groupings where we put three or four or five stamps together. Um, it's just we had put some assortments together initially when we got the stamps because people wanted um, 
some sets to choose from because they didn't want to make up their own mind of what ones to get it is it's funny that brush sets and stamp sets and color sets it's a lot easier for people to say i just want that set rather than to go through and pick what they want so they're the same stamps they're just put into assortments and then how many stamps again for what freebie um it's 10 stamps you get one stamp for free and if you order six stamps, you get the sponge rollers. So when you order 10, you get the sponge rollers for free. Plus you get to choose another stamp for free as well. Well, Janine's looking through to see if she's missed any questions. I'm going to show you guys. These are a couple of items that you're not going to find on the website. Um, and so these are rubber pads. So before we got these nice even smooth edge pads that we're selling now. Um, I bought this material in squares and had to cut the circles. And this material is so durable that it is almost impossible to cut with a knife. I tried using like an X-Acto knife and, and it, it just, it goes into it and it will cut, but I was afraid I was gonna slice myself. So I used garden shears basically to, to cut these. So the edges of these are kind of rough and I'd use these in workshops. Now we've got them cutting them when they manufacture them and doing them in circles. So I have five of these that I had used in some workshops of the rubber mats and the edge just isn't perfectly smooth. I can't sell these on my website, um, but I'm gonna sell these. If anybody's interested, I have five of these. Just type in item number two, how many you want up to five. Once the five are gone, they're gone. Um, and they're, they're $10 and five for shipping. I don't know how Carol, like you know, I set this down here oh. and I was talking and I'll bet she, she saw it, which is, is perfectly fine. Like, <laughs> Good one, Carol. So I do have five of these if anybody is, is interested in those. Um, and then the, other, the only other special item that I have that isn't on the website is this week as I was packing an order for some pumpkin clay puzzling molds, this large uh, pumpkin clay puzzling mold. I ended up dropping it and I got a little chip out of the top of it. For clay puzzling, this is fine. It's not oh. unusable, um, but I will sell this one for $20 and 15 for shipping for this pumpkin mold. I only have one of these. I have part of the chip is here if you wanna glue it back in place, but I would just use it the way that it is. Um, and that chip really isn't gonna be a problem. So if anybody wants that, that's item number one, and I only have one of these. All right, I'm just looking around here to see if there's now, anything that I missed. People, like, are putting two comma one, two times one, does that just mean they want? So it looks like Kim wants two of them. Right, or Cheryl wants one, two, three, two. Five, there's more than Okay, and we'll go through. We'll go through, and we'll figure out who messaged first. Um, but I'm Cheryl Huffman. I'm assuming it's two and one that you're you're listing. Angela, you're saying number two, just one of them. Carol, just one of it. Cindy Lou, two, just one of it. And Kim, you want two of them if there's two left. Um, and Drew, you're saying one of number two. All right, Cheryl, I just want to make sure that you're saying number two and number one, that you want one of each of those. Cheryl wants one. All right, okay. So um, anybody have other questions about the technique? Um, let me know and I can, can answer those questions. Um, you know, go to the website. If you have any trouble, you know, getting it through the website, if you feel more comfortable calling with a credit card, you can do it as a, uh, print and pay, it will give you an option at the end, or you can enter your credit card, you can use PayPal um, to pay, but this way you'll get a printed receipt. If you want to call with a credit card number, that's perfectly fine um, that I can process those um, not over uh, the website then. So um, just looking to see if there's any other questions. So next week, we're going to use the stamps and we're going to use them to do impressions in clay. And I'm going to show you some really cool things um, using the stamps in another way. So if you guys get stamps, order them this week. We've got a lot of them in stock. If we do run out of any of them, um, they're pretty quick about 
um, getting those stamps into us. Um, I know there's a couple people on here that have been waiting for some leaf stamps. Those are back in stock and we'll be shipping your orders out soon as well. I'm just looking at Rita's question there. Will you have the product sets like with what class you did them with? Um, I don't know if you're asking Rita if it's if I will have sets of the stamps to go with projects to say this is what was used on that project. Um, if there's a picture of something that you're looking at that I've posted and you want to know which stamps are on there, just direct me or tag me on that picture and I can let you know which stamps were used on those projects. I think that's what you're asking. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us tonight. If you have other questions, type them into the comments on here. If you think of them later, send me a private message. Um, we'll be getting a lot of stuff shipped out here this week. And um, with the, the holiday weekend coming up, um, I know I'll be packing a lot of stuff this weekend to, to, to get that out to everybody. So thanks for joining us. I look forward to seeing everybody next week. And in, in the weeks to come, we'll keep doing this as long as you guys keep showing up. And we I know we got over 100 people in here tonight for the live. And we've had several oh. thousand views on some of these. You forgot oh. something. What's that? Mystery box. Oh, my God, oh, mystery box. Yeah. Um, Rita said she just wanted to double check if she has the correct products, like if she's good to use concepts. Yeah, and you can, Rita, you can you can message me and we can chat too if you have questions and um, we'll figure out what you've got there. I know you said you had some stamps and things and I'll help you figure out the colors and things that you've got that what you can work with and what would work best. But yes, the mystery box. Um, hold on one second. There okay. was somebody earlier who, did you go over, like they wanted you to just go over what products were all being used? I think maybe. I did, yep. Yeah, I kind of discussed okay. the differences between uh, color concentrates and stroke and coat and designer liner. Okay. All right. So we've got the mystery box. You got the names over there of everybody that mm -hmm. wanted. I'm going to have Janine draw one out. Okay. Some people are commenting again. I, I already put their, those people's names in. So okay. Yeah. You, so if you had already. Yep. Yeah, if I gave you a thumbs up earlier, then. Oh, someone wants to know if there's a way that wants to watch your video without having a Facebook account. Um, you know, I think you can get in because it's I've got it set up that it's supposed to be um, that anybody on Facebook or off of Facebook can view the video. We're also on that page on my website. We're going to be putting the recordings. Um, I took a look at how we can do that, and we set up the structure to be able to add those videos in there. And so those videos um, will be getting posted on our website too, so that you'll be able to watch. And we want to edit some stuff out at the beginning when we're waiting for people to come in and stuff, so that'll take a little a little while to get those in there. Well, someone said they missed the commercials. Well, and it's you know a, a lot of the products. Um, you know, I could sit here and show you individual stamps tonight and, you know, show you the numbers on them, but it is kind of easier to go to the website and pick out which ones you want. Because if I put assortments together, you guys would want something different. Oh, here's the pumpkin. I didn't think I had one out here, but I did. So that's the, the pumpkin stamp, and it's, you know, the same size as all these other stamps. All right. So we've got the mystery box, and here is our winner. Janine's going to mark that down. And if for some reason, once I open this box, if she's not interested in what's in here, um, she can pass it on to somebody else. And so I mentioned that we've got a lot of new stuff on our website. Yeah. Um, so in this box, you've got some stroke and coat. Um, we also just added... Um, clay carbon transfer paper. If you haven't used this, it's a, a carbonless paper um, that will work on greenware and bisque for transferring designs. You can draw over the top of this, lay a pattern over the top of it, and draw over it, and it will transfer a line onto the piece. This is a pack of a dozen sheets. So we'll be carrying those. Um, we've also got regular graphite paper. This is a gray graphite paper. Um, this comes with four 9 by 13 sheets. 
that's also used for transferring designs. This is a waxless transfer paper, so it won't cause colors to repel. We've got a new set of the um, small stamps in here. We've got some designer liner in here. We've got um, Mako UG underglazes. We just added the whole line. We've got kits and we've got individual bottles of this. And so this is a clay-based underglaze. It's a three coat underglaze. You've got some of that. Um, if you haven't used Mako's kiln wash, this is like an industrial kiln wash that doesn't flake off and powder off like other kiln washes. Um, it's also great for filling in some, some low areas and chips and things and shelves. Um, there's a, a pint of that is in here. Um, we've also added the entire stoneware line of Mako glazes. Um, this is one of their stoneware colors, and we'll be getting all of those up on the website soon. Um, we're also adding a lot of new tools, and these sanding sticks, um, there's different grades here as far as um, how big the, the the sand is on these sticks and these aren't some flimsy cheap sticks that you buy at a, a show um, these are really durable they're great for sanding bisque sanding greenware if you've got a rough spot um, areas like if you get underglaze on a piece piece and it doesn't wash off these are great for sanding um, those pieces and then you've also got some of the new menta brushes um, that are in this assortment as well. So I don't know if she responded, if um, she's happy with this box. If she isn't, we will pass it on to somebody else. And then I will share the twist with this box that comes with this tonight as well. So we'll wait for her to, to comment. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I don't see. Um, oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> well, that's good that she wants it. And so the little twist that I'm doing tonight um, as a thank you is this box is free tonight. So I was hoping you wouldn't turn it down. So um, I just need you to um, message me, private message me, um, the shipping address of where this one is going. So we're just doing one mystery box tonight. It's free. And, you know, throughout the year, we may occasionally throw in a free mystery box here and there. I know you guys love the mystery box and it's always a challenge to come up with something different for that mystery box each week. So um, if there isn't anything else, we'll say good night to everybody. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Be safe. Um, try to do something fun without getting yourself in trouble or um, upsetting somebody else. So I'll, I'll just <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> you never know nowadays what's, what's right or wrong. So take care, you guys, um, and we will see everybody next week.